Hey guys, my name is Ryan, and welcome to another installment of Intermediate Guides. So with this series, I am uh, uh, teaching skills that will help you be able to increase the difficulty of adversaries that you're able to go up against. So the theme of today's video is going to be um, planning and paying attention to the invader deck. Um, so we're going to be playing against Sweden. Sweden has a normal explore and a normal build. They have no bonuses for either of them. Um, and they hit really, really hard on the Ravage. So we need to be paying attention to the invader deck so that way we can make sure that we can deal with problems before they happen. Instead of trying to play in a very reactionary manner, um, we want to be very proactive because if you're trying to be defensive and reactive against Sweden, then they're just going to overwhelm you. Now, we're going to be playing as Sharp Fangs. Sharp Fangs is a spirit that doesn't have any defense built into him. And instead, he's very aggressive. He's a tempo spirit. He tries to get ahead and he tries to stay ahead. So this will accent this uh, skill that we're looking to work on. We need to figure out uh, where Sweden is likely to be attacking us next, such that we can use our ranging hunt to the best of our ability. You get to move the most amount of beasts with this ability on the push side. So that means if you want to do a lot of damage in a specific land, you need to already have all the beasts there. You can only bring one of them in fast, and that's not very much. So planning and preparing ahead of time is how we're going to uh, make the best use of our ability here. So with that being said, let's just get into it. Wetland Explorer and a Sands Royal Backing. All right, so I'm going to be putting the town here in Sands number five because we know that we're not going to get Sands again until either a Sands Escalation or a Coastal uh, for the Sands specifically. So if we were to put the town here and we were to hit that uh, level two Sands Escalation, we would lose a Dahan. So I'm going to put this guy here in order to play around that. All right, so we can take a look at the board and we can see what's going to be happening soon. We know that they are going to be uh, building and then ravaging here in the wetlands. So we need to figure out something that we can do about that. Uh, now, when there's a single explorer, it's pretty easy to deal with. We have a lot of cards. We have Prey on the Builders, Terrifying Chase. Uh, we also can use Ranging Hunt in order just to kill the explorer. So we have tons of options here. This land here, on the other hand, is going to be quite a bit more difficult because with the city and the town um, and the explorer, there's going to be six health worth of invaders, five of them, that we have to be able to deal with. Uh, so we could do something like a terrifying chase or a prey on the builders in order to prevent the city from happening and then try and use a ranging hunt in order to um, you know, kill it, uh, the rest of it in the fast phase of next turn. But I'm going to take a look at a power card so that way we can get a better idea of what we want to do. Okay, so nothing here is too crazy for land number six, but we do have some other cards, such as gnawing root biters, that can deal with land number one. The problem with terrifying chase and prey is that they arrange zero abilities, so we'd have to move a presence into this land in order to use it. But with gnawing root biters, we can just push out, uh, just leave it here and then push it out. So we could move our presence into. Um, this uh, wetland six and then solve wetlands one uh, from our distance so i really like that uh, infested aquifers does give us good elements uh, disease is always nice to be able to prevent those cities from getting out um, however i think it's a little bit too slow from what we're trying to do today or, or this turn grow through sacrifice to cheat code i'm not going to take it elemental boom um sharp fangs is one of those spirits where your elements are so important I would actually consider taking Elemental Boon in the solo game. Being able to have your plant animal early, but then also being able to transition into fire animal into the mid and late game, very, very powerful. 
However, with all is considered, I like the flexibility that Root Biters gives us, so that's what I'll be taking. And now we're going to place a presence. I'm going to put a presence just here in the middle, just so we can spread out a little bit. And let's see. Typically, you would want to take one from the top. That would allow you to use your Ranging Hunt turn one, or at least the damage part of it. But no matter what two cards we play, we're still going to get our two animals. So I'm just going to go straight for the bottom. And if next turn we have to, I can always pick up the animal element. So we'll do something like a Root Biters and a Terrifying Chase. So we can push out these guys and then kill the city. That'll produce two fear. If we do that, so let's see. So let's see, if we do this, I could take these guys, push them in, transform the presence next turn, so that'll be two, and then pull this in for a third. So yeah, we'd be able to solve this land. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. And we're off to the jungle. Great. So root biters, I'm gonna push them towards here. And terrifying chase, uh, we are going to go this way. Great, so now we know that we want to um, kill stuff off in this land. So if I just played these three cards and went for three card plays, uh, we would be able to kill this, come on over here and prevent this build. And that's really powerful. So that's what I'm going to do. Um, but that will put us out of cards. But I think we should be okay. Great. Quick in the Earth Struggle. This is a fantastic card. It allows us to do a Defend 10 in this land. So we don't have to do anything to solve it. Go here. Transform. Boom, boom, boom. Uh, I will leave this presence in place. And I'm going to spread out my beasts so that way I can be more effective in more lands. So with Sweden, because they start off so quickly with that... Um, by, by, by pitching one of their stage one cards at the beginning. Uh, we really can't plan too much around what they will do. Um, but uh, as we get into stage two, we spread out. So that way, no matter where they go, we can deal with it. And then we can start to consolidate our forces once we start eliminating their possibilities. Okay. If we were to go here, then that would be ravaging for 11 damage and we'd still be okay. So I'm fine with going here. Um, uh, let's see, we could go here because if we take a look at the Dahan ability, it's going to push the town away. So that works perfectly fine. Um, However, I do like the idea of currently this is isolated and cannot be explored. And if we were to push a town out, that would not happen. So I'm less excited about that. I think I'll just go here. And then we can push a guy out. I'll push you out. All right, removes an explorer or a guy from a land with beasts. So oh, this one's gonna die in the ravage. So we'll just pick up a freebie. And look at that, prevented it from going. So now um, we, you know, we have this quicken, so we can not get blighted. And really now we just need to um, just make sure that we don't get overwhelmed. So let's just, you know, get a few beasts. And now is the moment where we can start to plan and prepare for the next thing. Uh, so this is a great turn for us to be a little bit greedy. Um, I can just quicken and it'll just solve this land just fine. So I'm actually going to gain another power card and just not play 
uh, a ton of cards. Uh, here we have Teeming Rivers, very good card. Needs a Sacred Sight, but we're going to be going for Sacred Sight anyways. Has good elements for us. Go here for the Reclaim. And actually, I said we weren't going to play three cards, but I wasn't considering the Reclaim. So with this Reclaim and the two near the jungle, we are able to hit our Innate. So we'll be able to kill this town, and then we can... Uh, spread ourselves out again. Um, great. So we'll defend here. And then we can bring this beast in. Kill the town. And now the question is, where do we go with these beasts? Right, so the obvious answer is just to push one to the left, push one to the right, because that's where the enemies are. But I think it's also worth considering where can the enemies go. Um, if there, there are four different possibilities and two of them are terrible for us. Wetlands uh, will cause a escalation and mountains will cause an escalation. Sands is not going to be such a big deal. I do want to put one in this sands no matter what. Just so that way I can uh, use it with my terrifying chase. Because by adding a beast there we get to push even more. And so we'd be able to get everything out of this land and do a, a little bit better job of cleaning the inland. So that one's going to happen. This other one, um, uh, I will leave here. And um, I'm going to not move any of my presence so I can use Teeming Rivers. Okay. New species spread. Uh, transmuting the worst is obviously really, really good for us. We don't have enough energy to do it up front. Um, and so the only way that I'd be able to do this is if I were to forget a moon card. So quicken, team, or prey. And I think prey is good, but I think we're not going to need it for the rest of the game. So we are going to forget it. Get ourselves another beast in this mountain. Great, and that'll even prevent a build in this land. Bad news bears. Okay. So, uh, there's no blight to remove, so we get to add a beast. And I am going to work to solve this mountain right here. Just by adding a beast in it. And by killing the explorer. So next turn we'll be able to kill it and then bring all of our beasts in towards the coast because now we've done a great job of clearing out and basically denying anything from going on in this uh, jungle so uh, now we can consolidate all of our power over towards the coast okay great so we always want to go for good elements um, and nature resilience is absolutely that uh, Gift of Constancy is a great one to consider. It gives us more energy and lets us reclaim even more cards. So even though we're going to be reclaiming two cards a turn out of five, being able to reclaim three out of five is definitely worth considering. Uncanny Melting is not a bad card. It'll get rid of this Blight here. But Nature's Resilience is just too good to ignore. Okay, so we want to play a Terrifying Chase to deal with this Sands. Need to play the uh, Defend here. And then we actually will not be able to do anything here. Fascinating. So in that case, Terrifying Chase is not important enough to botch this entire operation. Uh, so instead... Uh, we'll have to play two cards with good elements. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead with Teeming Rivers. Probably going to use it to add a beast into this land. And then two near the jungle. So thinking about two near the jungle, where can we use it? And I guess we have another card place. So we'll do that too. Um, there's three possibilities. Okay, We could get Sands, we could get Wetlands, or we can get Coast. So Sands, Wetland, Coast means that one of these two is absolutely guaranteed to get a hit. 
Um, so we want to be able to play Tomb of the Jungle in order to hit uh, whichever one comes up. We know that we're guaranteed to get something of value. Um, so uh, even though we have no target up front, we know there's something coming down the pipeline. And we'll just bring our beastie boys in. Okay, beast kill explorers. That's always nice. Jungle or wetland, great. By putting it on this wetland, we play around any kind of escalation shenanigans. So now we're guaranteed to have a nice, easy cruise to the victory line. All right, kill him. Okay, we're gonna wanna add another beast here. Okay, root biters, let's get these guys out. And then we can use this to clear up that last explorer. Great, so we can do, mm, don't have enough here. So we're actually gonna to have to use a nature resilience here because we are gonna be one B short of being able to just straight up kill everything with our ranging hunt. But no matter what, we're gonna be doing this. And let's, uh, we have enough good cards. We just wanna make sure we have enough energy to play everything. So we're just going to be playing as many of our zero cost cards as we possibly can. Huh. Wonder why I can't get a second reclaim. Oh, I can. Interesting. I'm not used to this UI. All right, so now the question is where to go with these beasts? Well, we know that this is either going to be a wetlands or a coastal. And so either way, we know that this wetlands one is going to get hit. Uh, if it goes wetlands, uh, this um, wetlands six is not adjacent to anything. So that's not gonna be a problem. And then if it's coastal, well, it's gonna die to the ravage. So that's not gonna be a problem. So we can basically leave them here or we can come back out to this jungle. So, cause either way, uh, we're just gonna be getting an explorer and then a town here and we can just, you know, <laughs> uh, just kill it with this um, to near the jungle. All right, so the question is, where do we go with these beasts? Now, we know that these this card can only be either a wetland or a coastal. So let's just take a look at wetland first. We'll get two explorers, oh well, sorry, one explorer. This does not have any adjacent buildings. So we'll just get one explorer here and we can deal with it with two near the jungle. Okay, we don't need to worry about it. Let's say it's coastal. We'll get explorer here, here, here. Now this sands will just die in the ravage. Okay, there will already be beasts here to deal with um, the guy here. And then there'll be a single explorer here. We'll kill two near the jungle. So no matter what, we're going to be taking care of this. Therefore, this land is solved. This land is solved. We can only push two, so this land will still have beasts. The only place to put our beasts is in this jungle four. And we'll just leave our presence there just so we have them. Right. We do not want to turn it into a build. If we go for the um if we if we go for the adding a blight, we'll add a blight here, which means we won't be able to use ranging hunt on it anymore. So that'll be frustrating. Uh but getting the minus one health will kill this guy. 
you know, just to avoid getting the blight, I think teaching the invaders might not be a bad idea. But if we have to add a town in a land with Dahan, we go here or here. 50% chance of Sweden escalation, I don't like that. And here ruins all of our isolate stuff. So, unfortunately, it looks like we're going to go for Spurn. So, it will blight here that'll cause some very frustrating problems for us but we're just gonna have to deal with it and it's coastal yep so we know that too near we can go here now in this situation because of this blight we can no longer use ranging hunt in this land Therefore, I'm going to use gnawing root biters to push these guys out. Uh, teeth gleam, right? We'll just, uh, let's see, we could add beasts or we could create fear and push ourselves up to a terror level three. Um, as is currently, we can bring one in and transform to kill all of the towns. So that's probably fine. I think maybe just going for the uh, fear is the best choice at this point. And Terrifying Chase. You know, another thought that I just had is what if we use Terrifying Chase to push these towns into this sands and then use nature's resilience to defend and let the Dahan do the work? Hmm... But then there would be one surviving explorer, and then that would build, and then we could like range and hunt this. I'm not so sure it solves much for us. I'm just going to push a single explorer. Oh, no, I have to push all of them if I do it. I do want that to fear. Hmm. Then instead of using gnawing root biters, we're going to roll back to when I did that. We're going to terrifying chase here to push these guys in. Because it accomplishes the same thing, but we get the fear. Because I don't care so much about these gnawing root biters. Okay. So if we transform you, and then let's see, we want to start digging for some kind of blight removal card so that way we can finish off this. Now with a double reclaim, I think it's better just to go safe and just do a full reclaim, pick up a miner. All right, great, we got the absorb corruption. It costs energy, but it does remove blight. And the question is, do we even need presence? I'm inclined to say no. All right, because if we add a presence, we'll have one energy. And we could play like two near, non group biters. And then with our one energy, play something like teeming rivers. So that way we'd have all the elements that we need. <laughs> well, actually, if I go absorb corruption, if I go with the animal, I could use the absorb corruption to gather this blight. And that's as good as blight removal, as far as I'm concerned. And then uh, there would we could push the beast back to kill this city. That's an interesting idea, right? So if I go for like an animal here. And just play all the cards that I can, we'd still get our ranging hunt. I think this does everything that we want all at the same time. Great. Now we don't know where uh, we're going to be going next. And we're going to be hitting uh, stage three. So we're going to be hitting a lot of things at once. But we know that these two lands back here are isolated. So they're not going to be a problem. Um, 
I think we're gonna put one here and one out here. Okay, two is enough to deal with this. Um, but uh, by spreading out, we once again are able to protect ourselves from anything that the invaders might throw at us. To add an explorer in. Sure, we'll go here so we don't mess up that ravage. Defend two in all coastal lands. That would be four, two. That would not do it. But we can get a free explorer kill just by pulling this guy in. Why not? Okay. So absorb. Uh, two near the jungle. So that we, because we can't do anything with this blighted land. So we can just deal with that. And this gnawing root biter. We could push this town in. And let's see. Transform. That puts us at three. Pull in. That's four. That doesn't quite solve it. I could push this into the sands and then lay down something like a nature's resilience. I like that a little bit better. Because now with the defend and the killing of this city, we can get ourselves a Terra Level 2 victory. Alright, let's do it. Let's go here, and we don't need any more cards. We have everything we need, so we're just going to make sure we have enough energy to get it done right. So we want to do a Nature's Resilience, and then uh, let's just do a little bit of covering our butt, just in case something goes wrong. So teeming rivers, you know, if we get like a plus one damage, right, we can remove this blight. Um, two near the jungle in case, you know, for something happens and they survive this turn. And let's see, we're going to do a quicken just for the elements. And then... We'll do a uh, root biter, so we save our one energy, so that way we can reclaim. Okay, and let's just spread out all over the place. We have no clue what's gonna be coming up next. Uh, let's see, cities do plus two damage. Uh, none of that really matters, but getting two fear will get us to terror level three, and that will win us the game because there are no cities. And there we go. So I hope you found this video helpful. Um, in this game, in order to get ourselves ahead, we had to consider all the different places where Sweden could be exploring next. And by doing so, we were able to set up our beasts in an appropriate manner, such that uh, we could isolate the inland and then work our way in. Uh, halfway through the game, we started skipping a few explorers and we were able to snowball all the little advantages that we got in order to get a big victory. Um, I think Sharfangs is a great spirit to practice these skills on. He doesn't have anything that goes over the top. He just has a gr bunch of tiny little tools that will uh, basically just, just, just kneecap the invaders um, and uh, will allow you to, uh, you know, kind of play like a different game. Instead of trying to go big and go over the top, you just keep on gaining tempo and preventing the invaders from doing anything. And, uh, you know, it's a little bit of a puzzle to get started. But once you figure it out, the games quickly become a breeze. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you have any other questions, feel free to let me know. And I will be happy to put out anything you guys want. Have a great day.